Hi, it's Kurt Yasmina here from Morgans. Uh, today it's my pleasure to be speaking with Wes Mars, Managing Director and Founder of Mars Group. Wes, it's been a busy uh, 12 to 18 months of the business as you prepare for listing. I thought maybe we just start with the background of yourself, an overview of Mars Group and then a history of the business if that's okay. Yeah, sure Kurt. Um, yeah, it's certainly been a busy time. Um, I founded the business back in 2002. Um, founded it started off with a with a single bobcat um, after spending uh, five years in Sydney um, trying to play rugby league and um, unfortunately um, didn't quite make it in rugby league and um, maybe fortunately um, moved home and started a business um, as I said we found it started off with with a single bobcat um, and I had fourteen thousand dollars to my name uh, which funded that and uh, borrowed 25 and bought a first tip truck um, from there, we continue to grow the business through small-scale civil works and plan hire. Um, we expanded that over a number of years. Um, and in, in later years, around that sort of 2014 period, um, we expanded to, to diversify the business with um, quarries, um, property, and also an underground business. Awesome. Then I thought maybe we could just touch on the historical financial performance of the business and I guess the key uh, drivers for the FY21 growth outlook and beyond. Yeah, sure. Look, um, over the years, we've, um, you know, we've always reinvested and um, reinvested in the business to continue the growth. Um, as I said, the business was founded just with plan hire and small scale civil works. Um, that, that business, um, we only began that diversification in around 2014. Yeah. Um, you know, but as the over the last um, three years specifically, um, it's definitely become more an even contribution of the earnings. Yeah. Um, and, and, uh, significant growth in the construction materials and property business. Yeah. Um, today, uh, all four segments contribute more than 20% of EBITDA. Yeah. Um, and then in the future, the biggest growth areas are going to be in, in the construction materials and in the property business. And the key drivers for that growth in construction materials and property, is that some of the infrastructure spending the governments suggest in that space? And um, Look, the, I mean, the, in the civil construction and hire, it's definitely an increase, um, increased project pipeline. Um, we're seeing um, upwards of 50% more than, than the last three years um, already. And then we're seeing even more projects um, flagged to, to come online over the next three to five years. Um, I think off the back of that, you're, you're having population growth in regional areas, um, which is supporting the, the property business that we have that is, is regionally based at this minute. Um, with our construction materials business, um, we're expanding our footprint. So we're, um, we've been acquiring and, and building um, greenfield and also brownfield quarries. And those um, quarries, what sort of projects will they be sort of looking to uh, supply into? Are there any sort of major projects that yeah. you expect to benefit from? Um, look, we, we've our, our current we've got twenty quarries in total. Um, today, we're currently operating out of nine of those quarries. Um, over the next um, two years, we've got eleven quarries to bring online. Um, you know, the the largest project there to support those quarries coming online is the inland rail. Um, so we hold a significant position. Um, along the inland rail, we cover an 1100 kilometre section um, and, and also the new highway upgrade. So the government's committed significant uh, funding um, to, to put in overtaking lanes and also upgrade parts of that new highway, being the inland highway between Brisbane and Melbourne. Yeah, okay. Terrific. I guess you have quite a large regional exposure to your business. Could you maybe just touch on uh, the benefits that afford your business relative to maybe peers that have that greater metropolitan exposure? Yeah, we... Um, you know, Dubbo being being a hub, um, it sits 800, it's smack bang in the middle of uh, Melbourne and Brisbane, um, 800 kilometres either way, 400 kilometres from Sydney, so it gives us um, really good coverage right across New South Wales. Um, even though we are um, very centred or regionally centred, um, we it gives us the ability to work everywhere. It's, it's very, very good for transport um, and it's it's obviously where, where I grew up and where I came from. Um, and it's probably by chance that we that we came to, to build the business there, but there is strong fundamentals around why it's a strong position for us to, to operate from. And I guess, how do you find competition in those regions too? Are you sort of coming up against the larger peers, for example, those construction material space, or are they sort of more confined to the city? Um, no, we're definitely, um, we're competing against those global majors of Holson, Borrell, Hanson, mm. um, and then there's also a bunch of regional operators, I think we would be the largest um, regionally focused. So we've got a, you know, we've got a, a number of quarries that we can pull out those operational synergies um, and, and our services, we've been able to, to really synergize those and pull out all the benefits. Terrific. I guess M&A and acquisitions are a key component 
uh, of your growth strategy going forward. I guess, could you talk about which segments of your business you see the, the greatest opportunity to expand via um, further acquisitions? Yeah, certainly. Um, yeah, we've got a, um, we're very aspirational on, on where we want to take the business. Um, the biggest areas of focus being construction materials and property. Um, but there's also a number of opportunities to continue our geographic expansion with the civil construction and hire. Um, we're looking at some additional fleets um, and potentially businesses to, to grow that um, operational presence um, in, in what we do. And, um, but I would still say probably construction materials and, and property being the strongest focus. Yep. Um, with the underground segment, um, the opportunity there is about expanding our manufacturing. Yep. I guess COVID-19 has obviously been a challenge for all businesses, I think, in 2020. Can you maybe talk about how your business handled the pandemic and if there's sort of any lingering impacts or maybe conversely, which parts of your business are starting to perform better now that um, sort of restrictions are being eased? Yeah. Yeah, certainly um, every everyone wasn't spared in, in the pandemic, um, but I think we're definitely one of the lucky ones. Um, today, we're, we're relatively unaffected, um, apart from not being able to travel to our factory that's based in Vietnam. Um, in the initial impact um, was we felt it in the property business, um, just through approval process, um, both from banks and government departments or agencies, um, just that process slowed. Um, but today, you know, we're through that hurdle and um, we're actually seeing a benefit from post COVID with some government stimulus, yeah. um, albeit um, probably only 10 to 15%. Yeah. Um, we're seeing significant growth in those regional areas where we operate. Um, the other part of the business that was affected is, our, is obviously our manufacturing um, we pulled some parts out of, out of various parts of Europe, Italy, um, and also China. Um, so some of those supply chains are slowed down a little bit. Um, and just our ability to travel to the factory and take clients and do factory acceptance testing, um, et cetera, we were unable to do that at the minute. So um, our growth plans um, there have been a little bit affected. Um, but, you know, we, we see that, you know, we will get through COVID and um, the opportunity is still there. We've invested significant capital there to grow the business in the future. Great. And I guess you have quite a probably a diverse but complementary set of businesses. Could you maybe touch on the uh, the benefits that vertical integration affords you? Yeah, certainly. The um, three of the four segments are, are very integrated, um, being the construction materials, um, civil construction and hire, and the property business. Um, you know, it allows us, um, for example, with the property business, we build all our own civil works. Um, you know, if we've we use our own men and our own plant and equipment, um, which which gives the plant plant high business, um, a bit of a backbone. And then if we've got a quarry in those areas, um, we also use our own quarry materials. Um, so it allows us to capture margin opportunities, you know, at every step of the way. Um, and it allows us to compete, you know, because we um, we aspire to be the, the lowest cost producer in everything that we do. I guess if you had to choose, I guess, the most positive outlook for one of your four business units, I guess, yeah, which part of the business do you think has the strongest growth outlook over the next sort of two to three years? Um, look, in the business today, um, we've got two to three years growth in hand in construction materials and also in property. Um, so we've got a lot of property and um, quarry assets um, that are yet to produce a dollar um, that we'll bring online over the next few years. So um, I would have to say those two, um, but I wouldn't wouldn't disregard the civil construction and hire as well, just purely off the, the outlook um, and the pipeline that's that's in hand at the minute. And I guess the benefits of ASX listing that sort of provides you, yeah, I guess, further balance sheet capacity to chase some of this growth too, is that correct? Or? Yeah, certainly. Um, this has been an opportunity for us to, to reset the balance sheet um, and give us um, additional liquidity to take advantage of opportunities. Um, that's probably the most exciting thing for me is um, to have that capability to take some some bigger um, bigger acquisitions and, and consider, um, you know, things that we couldn't consider before. Yeah. I'm Kurt Gelsmiano, and today it's been my pleasure to chat with Wes Mars, Managing Director and Founder of Mars Group. I think Wes has touched on the strong growth outlook for this business, uh, which remains leveraged to growing infrastructure uh, demand in regional New South Wales uh, and its strong uh, residential property development pipeline. Uh, Mars will be listing under the ticker MGH uh, in early December.